nuclear reactions convert matter into energy, mass into energy. This is the basis of our nuclear reactor system that does fission, taking ura uranium or plutonium and inducing fission to create smaller elements. Um, so that converts some matter into energy. And uh, the relationship is given to us by uh, Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared. So if we use SI units of kilograms for mass, meters per second for the speed of light, we'll have our energy in terms of joules. Another common energy unit uh, that is used for nuclear processes is mega electron volts, MeV. An electron volt is the energy imparted to an electron as it's pushed across a volt of potential. So one AMU equals 931.5 mega electron volts. So we'll use our joules primarily for this equation, uh, but two other properties that we use to describe the strength of a nucleus is a mass defect. So we add up all the protons and neutrons to form the nucleus. They don't add up. There's some missing matter as we put them all into a nucleus. And that matter represents the binding energy. So some matter is converted into energy that energy is holding that nucleus together. The nucleus is extremely dense, extremely compact, and the electrostatic forces are trying to blow that nucleus apart. The positive is repelling the positive. And um, so the binding energy holds that nucleus together. So we're not going to have to memorize any of these numbers here for the mass of a hydrogen atom, hydrogen one atom, so that has a proton and an electron. Uh, the mass of a neutron, the mass of a proton, the mass of an electron. So we'll be using these to calculate our mass defects and binding energies. We'll first start off with just uh, equals mc squared. So if we lose 0.15 grams of matter in a nuclear reactor, how many joules of energy are performed? So we use our e equals mc squared, we convert our 0.15 into kilograms. So this multiplied by 10 minus 3 to get the kilograms. So we add in our speed of light in meters per second. And as we went through the calculator, we get 1.35 times 10 to the 13 joules. So we get a lot of energy from a very small amount of matter. So let's uh, look at two problems for calculating uh, binding energy or mass defect. So we can ask for three different things. We can ask for mass defect. And um, the way it's set up here, we end up with a negative number. It's okay if we take that as a positive as an absolute value. We can also ask for binding energy for the atom as a whole and binding energy per nucleon uh, for the atom. And binding energy per nucleon is a better way of comparing different atoms with each other. So in this case, we're taking hydrogen 2. We're given that the mass of hydrogen 2 is 2.01410 AMU as was binding energy. So to find the mass defect, we're going to take our hydrogen 2, subtract off hydrogen 1, and a neut neutron. So we put in our numbers, 2.0141 and for hydrogen 2, 1.00786 for hydrogen 1, 1.00867 for a neutron. And we get a mass defect of 2.40 times 10 to minus 3 AMU. So that's one of the things that we can ask for, just the mass defect. We can ask for the binding energy of the molecule as is. So in this case, we 
are very happy to use mega electron volts. We can use this uh, conversion here between one AMU and uh, is equal to 931.5 mega electron volts. So we multiply our mass defect by the 931.5 mega electron volts. We end up with 2.236 mega electron volts. That's for the binding energy. Per nucleon, we have two nuclear particles, two nucleons. So we divide this by two, and we get 1.18 mega electron volts per nucleon. So let's do this one more time with hydrogen three. Its mass is 3.01605 AMU. We're going to subtract off a hydrogen one and two neutrons. And we do get a mass defect of 9.12 times 10 minus three. So it's uh, several times larger than our mass defect for our hydrogen two. The binding energy will take that mass defect, multiply by the 931.5 mega electron volts per AMU, we get 8.495 mega electron volts. Again, a couple times factor larger than our binding energy per hydrogen two. Binding energy per nucleon, we divide by the three nucleons, one proton plus two neutrons, and we get 2.832 mega electron volts per nucleon. So now it's a little bit more than a factor of two larger than for hydrogen two. And this number will keep growing as you go up in bigger and bigger elements. The binding energy per nucleon gets bigger up to a point, and the point is iron. So iron is our most stable element. It has the highest uh, binding energy per nucleon out of all the elements. And it gets smaller as you go higher in elements than iron. So our uranium, plutonium, they can give us energy because they're moving toward iron, toward a more stable nucleus. So they give off energy in that process. If we try to split iron into smaller nuclei, it'll take energy. So for the small nuclei, if we squeeze them together into uh, a fusion reaction, they can give off energy. So that's what the sun does. The sun is squeezing together some small nuclei into larger nuclei in the process that releases energy. And um, if we could do that, uh, that would give us a, another source of energy without the same radiation problems that uh, fission reaction does.